What's up, everybody? We're here live at the We Play studio in Los Angeles, and tonight it's all about the firsts. First round of the draft, first class talent, and the first ever fully produced pro football draft show right here on Twitch. Our pick is in, and tonight we pick you. Welcome to S Fans Draft Night Extravaganza, and it all starts right, right now. now. If you had to say one prospect that is your Simply Safe draft pick, a guy that you think cannot bust, who is he? I have got to go with Will Anderson. Yep. I think, I think Will Anderson is that guy who the production is there, the measurables are there. He has played at the highest level of college football in SEC at Alabama. He even played in Nick Saban's defense as a freshman. Uh, I think, you, I think. Who would you compare him to in the NFL? Like what NFL player would you compare him to? I, I was actually looking at like, um, so whenever I was going through my notes and, and doing a little bit of research, of course, I like to go and see what other people see, right? I, I like to go and look at some other people's comparison. And I, and I saw some people saying Demarcus Ware and some of these other guys who are, are bigger guys, but who I saw whenever I watched Will Anderson, I think he's like Von Miller. I mean, yeah. there, there could legitimately be a bunch of trades happening, and it all really depends on what the Texans decide yeah. to do. I think the Cardinals are going to trade their pick as well. There's no way they stay there. It's just wild. So, so let's talk about that scenario. Let's say, let's say the Texans take Will Anderson. Yeah. Now the Colts are at four. We know they need a quarterback. Yeah. And to your point, the Cardinals do not need a quarterback. The team's going to try to jump the Colts to steal a quarterback with C.J. Stroud, probably, right? Probably. I mean, for all we know, there are two storylines, though, I want to touch before we get into the draft. OK, something big just happened. It did. Lamar Jackson, big trust. Now the highest paid player yeah. in history. Yeah. Five more years in Baltimore. How do we feel? He did it with no agent, too. No agent. The year. Okay. Let's go, man. Okay. Do you let's think that Aaron go. Rodgers going to the Jets think they're a contender now? I do. I do think they're a contender, but listen, in football, there are no sure things. Mm -hmm. And he is damn near 40 years old. Yeah, he is. One big hit, and he's he's on a walker. You know what I mean? Hey. That's an old man. Yeah, he I can mean. He's still sling, but those bones are brittle. Yeah, I, I think the thing is with Aaron Rodgers going to this, I completely agree, by the way. I do think that they're, they're contenders now. Uh, I, I do believe that they're contenders now as well. They have an unbelievably talented and more almost more importantly than talented, they have, a, they have a talented and a young roster. Yeah. So when you put yeah. those two things together, these guys have room to grow and they're already good. I mean, I, I think the Jets are, the Jets are going to be scary. Sure. Who do you guys think is going to be the first pick? I think we all agree. Yeah, I, I, I think that everybody is in consensus. Bryce Young is the first pick off the board. It would be shocking in a baffling way. If Carolina traded up and took someone that wasn't the consensus, uh, number one overall pick, number one overall QB. I think with Bryce and, and Carolina, I think when you trade up and you sacrifice that much draft capital and you sacrifice a player mm -hmm. of that caliber um, to move up that many spots, I think you want a sure thing. You want to be locked in. And I think the other quarterbacks that I like in this draft have too many question marks. What, what Bryce has question marks about his size, but I don't think that will affect his performance as much as it will affect his ability to stay on the field. One more storyline, rumors coming in. Uh, there's a bunch of buzz now coming in about the Cardinals potentially trading off three to move spots with the Tennessee Titans in a trade that would involve D-Hop. Oh, dude, this thing is so, I mean, like, I... My, my, I was, I was reading this thing and I thought my brain was going to explode. <laughs> like, I'm like, dude, what, what is <laughs> happening here with Arizona? What's your boldest, most outlandish prediction for the draft? E-Rob, we'll start with you. Bijan Robinson falls to the Cowboys at 26 and they take him. Whoa, I like that. And then you're pissed because you don't want a first round running back. <laughs> I would not be mad about that. Okay. But if they take a tight end, I'm pissed. The I'm six pissed. flags over Texas would be ripping, yeah, baby. It would be. It would, would be, be excitement in Dallas. You know what I would love to see happen? What's that? We're gonna we're gonna keep it in Texas. I think Houston 
D'Amico Ryans comes in. You got you got the 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 hometown head coach, D'Amico Ryans, former linebacker for many years. Big storylines this year. They take their 12th pick. What if they find a way to move up and grab CJ Stroud at three? They because they have the second pick and the 12th pick. What if so, so you they think- do something crazy? Sell the farm, take 12, move to three, and they get their quarterback and, in my opinion, the top defender. In the so they keep the second pick. They keep the second, and they take the 12, they move up to three. That is wild. That would be insane. Here's you know, my bold prediction. Go ahead. Five quarterbacks go in the first round. Okay. The fifth goes at pick 16 mm. to the Washington Commanders. Hendon Hooker ends up in Washington. This is my bold, wild prediction. It probably won't happen, but I could see it happening. I hope it does. It's going to be electric if that happens. I mean, that, that's going to be something else, man. Right now, all eyes are on the Texans. Dude. What are they going to do with Dude. that second pick? The Texans are the puppet masters here, man. Woo! The Texans are the puppet masters for this draft. I, I mean, I, like I said, I think it'll be Will Anderson. If they go quarterback, I mean, I feel like if they go quarterback, it, like, accelerates the entire, like, cascading of what quarterbacks are taken. Oh, Roger Goodell is taking the podium, and our monitor is muted, but I can still hear the (laughs) boots. Oh, man. That's that's going to be the most depressing tradition. Yeah, boo this man. Yeah, he works, got, dude, he works feel, his ass off. That just how I feel feels. Like, I that's mean, how he feels, man. Dude, every year, dude, he goes up there and just gets just gets booed every time. Boo. There he is. Boo. Look at these guys, man. And we got it in. It looks like it is Bryce Holy Young. God. It is a done deal what from Alabama. How the hell do you take eight minutes to decide that you want Bryce <laughs> Young after you've had all offseason? Yeah. Like, what? You needed eight more minutes to pick? Come on, Carolina. What the hell are you guys doing? The office was milking it. There were a lot yeah. of high fives, a lot of celebrations. Hey, hey, they were spamming the three-minute ad button is what they were yeah. doing, dude. Yeah. Just unbelievable. I don't think Bryce Young is a guy who relies on his legs, like I said, but I do think he's a guy who can use his legs to get out of the pocket make plays down the field. He is just a playmaker, and I think he's going to be a fantastic player for Carolina. So, now the draft really starts. Look now the draft is homework. I'm proud of you, man. Look at that Span go, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's not in there. I like it. ba- yeah, he's better like at draft it. coverage than his Kale top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit better at this than I am at Kale, but yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. get that's, there. That's a good thing. Hey, yeah. So, Arizona is currently on the board. Wait a minute. Will the beans, man. We, have a, we have a trade. I, I don't see who it is yet. I'm sorry, I'm on Wi-Fi. <laughs> got my phone. I'm sorry. We have I a trade. I think we have a trade. Who traded? Dude, it? We traded it to the Texans. Dude, Texans, run! The Texans called it. The Texans are in a trade. I called it. I literally said it. Back to back pick. No shot. Ladies and gentlemen, race for impact. Dude, it's got to be Will Anderson. It has to be. Has to be. Wow. They got both of them. Houston. Simply safe on Big the move. Boy Trade alert. Moves. Huge. I can't believe I, I can't believe I called it. Yeah. I cannot believe I called it. That's that insane. Was nuts. I said there, that was nuts. I said there was no chance it was going to happen, but it would be amazing. And there it is. And it is official. Anderson. There Will it is. Will Anderson. Anderson. Is in. Texans. The Texans get their guy, C.J. Stroud, and arguably the best defender in the draft with the second dude and back-to-back third pick in the draft. That is absolute insanity, man. Frick, I need longer arms, dude. I'm, I'm feel, you know what I feel You know yeah. what I feel like? Peter Skronsky. I feel like Peter Skronsky. Peter Skronsky, great prospect, short arms. I could, I could <laughs> use a little, I could use a few more inches, which, hey, it's not Did the first we... time I've said that, I'll be honest. <laughs> Can you tell we've been prepping for the draft? You said short <laughs> arms, and I was like, Skaronsky immediately. So the 12th, and then they're saying, Oh my gosh! They took Anthony Richardson. It's Anthony Richardson to no the Colts. Shot. I they told you, Anthony. baby! Oh my gosh. I told you! Dude, okay, so exactly what we thought was going to happen. Oh my the Texas goodness. CJ Stroud, it accelerated everything, dude. Florida, stand up! That wow! Is insanity, dude. Holy. Oh my God. Anthony Richardson is here from Florida, quarterback from Florida. Ran a 4-4-3, I believe it was in the combine. Yep. Unbelievable athlete. Unbelievable athlete. He's got size. He's got strength. I mean, the guy, the guy looks almost like a 
He looks like an outside linebacker. Now Detroit's on the they clock. They have to take Jalen Carter here. Pairing him with Aiden Hutchinson, this would be... So Hutchinson, actually, interesting factoid, the most double-teamed defensive player last year, which just goes to show you not many weapons on that Lions defensive front. You have arguably the best player in the draft and Jalen Carter fall in your lap. Hold up, Lions hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. Arizona yeah. is trading back for, with the Lions. Wow! Trading to six. Is that confirmed? Is that a rumor? Is that confirmed? Okay, the Lions received picks 12 and 34. So they took the Houston pick and they gave it to the Lions. Wow. Wow. Arizona's head office right now, we have a picture of them. They are celebrating like, you know, the, like they are, they're, they're at their bar mitzvah. Dude, they're going yeah. crazy. Dude, L'chaim, dude. Yes. They're, they're having a great time, man. The pick is Paris Johnson Jr. Oh, my God. Pick Offensive tackle out of Ohio State. Unbelievable. Unbelievable Ohio State offensive tackle, Paris Johnson. This is a mammoth of a man. This is a big man, good feet, uh, big, heavy hands, dude. This guy's got a powerful punch, and he's exactly the type of guy you need to come in and protect Kyler Murray. Yes. Arizona has their quarterback. They have their guy. They've had him for a long time. They want to bring in Paris Johnson and make sure they, they protect their investment in him yes. and build around him. Little recap. Eagles get arguably the best player in the draft. Fly Eagles fly. Jalen Carter out of Georgia heads to the Eagles. The Bears leapfrog two other offensive tackles to take Darnell Wright out of Tennessee. They need help on that O-line. They get it. They think they have their guy. And Tennessee has locked its pick instantly. So the best guy on Tennessee's board made it to them, and they knew exactly who they wanted to pick. This is a no cool. deliberation, and we're about to see who that is. Peter Skoronsky. Yeah. I mean, this guy is is mm-hmm. an unbelievable offensive lineman. Before this pick goes in, I want to talk about something. Okay. I hate to give the Patriots credit. I hate to give them credit. Okay. But what a masterstroke. Trading down two picks to flip spots uh. with the Steelers so that they could trade to a team that took the player that they knew the Jets were going to take. I love it, actually. Yeah, I, lo- I love that analysis. Oh, yeah. That is PVP drafting. Yep. That is, hey, you know these guys are probably going to go in this direction. Yeah. Like, no, to hell with Let's that team. Fuck up. Yeah, there. we're we're yeah. gonna we're gonna ruin this whole thing for them. We're gonna draft ahead of them. I love that. That's PVP. That's badass. So they are uh, really using every time. To- every I'm minute. telling you, they are frantically seeking a draft part or, or a trade partner right now. They might be. They 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 very they're very yep. very legitimately maybe just looking for a draft partner right now. Uh, yeah, or a trade partner. Excuse me, a trade partner right now. Uh, if I had to guess, they probably have their guy. They have their pick. This is our backup, but maybe we're trying to trade first. Like, Moment of truth, Will. I just, we got our pick. Will McDonald. And it is that Will Ed McDonald. Huh? huh? They could have got him so much later. Will McDonald. Hey, that's a reach. That's a, that, that is a New what York. What the hell are we doing? That is a Jets pick. That is a New York Jets pick. That is a classic. The Jets have gone to their old ways. Why? He's a good player. Will McDonald is a good player. Now, I think they, were, they got him Kansi, early. If you're going to go do no, I know. Kansi, they got it. They, 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 I think it's a reach. The best corner is still there. It's a reach. I agree. It is a reach. I don't think he's a bad player, but I do think that the Jets reached for him. I think we saw a little bit of, uh, you know, in Madden where it's like, boo, it reached and then the chat Omega lulls. I think we saw a little bit of that. Let me say this. They've seen for me a Let lot. Let me say this. I have looked at probably thousands of Jets mock drafts. I have not seen Will McDonald to the Jets in a single one of them. I would have the Bucks taking a line. Um, Anton Harris out of uh, Oklahoma is still there, I think. Uh, yeah, Anton Harris. Anton Harris out of Oklahoma, tackle from Oklahoma. I think they go with him then. They need a, they need O-line so bad. I mean, do they need O-line that bad? Yes, their O-line is horrible. They got was, some pretty good line. No, they, they were Tristan so, Wirfs. Yeah, that's it. Their, their O-line was so bad last year. Do you feel bad for Baker Mayfield at all? Yeah. Because it's kind of like he just keeps getting kind of like passed around. I mean, he was the first overall pick. Yeah. So, well, I mean, so, he did play. But he kind of gets just like Elijah can't see. Elijah can't see. tackle. Yeah. In t- defensive I- line to Tampa Bay. Yeah, this kid rules. Out of pit, he's big time. 
That's a good fit. But here's the thing with Kalijah Kansi. Yeah. He's he's a big guy, but he's not super he's not super thick. He's not yeah. super wide, so I wouldn't put him at nose tackle, right? So he's he's a defensive, he's a defensive tackle, three technique. I think he ran a four six. Uh, at the combine, which is which is incredible, by the way, for an interior lineman. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. This guy flew up a lot of draft boards because of this comparison that they're showing yep. on the on the draft network right now mm -hmm. uh, to Aaron Darnold. You know, they yeah. came out of the same school, Both went through, almost yeah. the same build. They play very similar. Now, one is arguably the greatest defender in the NFL, and one is a prospect. But for a lot of people, this uh, kid's draft stock got elevated quite a bit. If, if he turns out good, they're, the Tampa Bay's defensive tackles are insane. They got Vita Vea, who's like 350 pounds, like huge guy. Yeah. There has been no receivers taken. Which is crazy. Who's going to be like the first coach to be like, crazy. let's take a receiver? Let's well, I think we have somebody on the floor over in Kansas City. Uh, we are going to pipe in live here in about 30 seconds to our on-the-floor commentator. Uh, I know a few people in chat have seen this guy before. He's been all over Twitch. Uh, his record of success precedes him. Uh, coach Estvand... Uh, one of the greatest coaches in the game. Just athletes love this guy. He's yeah. a player's coach, and so it's a real He had a pleasure. terrible season last year, too. My he God. He did have a terrible. He had a, he had a down season. He had a down season, so, you know, it's sad to see that he's probably on the, the hot seat moving into this next season. This guy is just terrible at his job. All oh right. Oh, my he, God. Yeah, no, he is. I see why he is. Oh, oh man, he is, he is now talking to Will Levis. Apparently, Will Levis is crying on his shoulder a bit, so we're we're holding. It's a very emotional moment over at the draft, apparently. Uh, coach, are you there? Uh, Gail, hear me out there. I can, yeah, I can hear yes, you, I coach. hear you. Let me tell you, man, I, I was trying to, I was trying to get out to this locker room, brother, and, and hell, I, I, you know, it's it's a dadgum shit show out there. Yeah. You know, Will, Will Levis ain't got drafted yet. He was coming up and crying on my damn shoulder. He's complaining and bitching and moaning. Listen, hey, son, your time will come, all right? Your time will come. All right, we're here at the, the damn, what is this? What did I say back there? Coach S fans, draft night extravaganza, okay? We got the locker room here. Uh, I, I got damn near mauled trying to get in here, okay? By, we have media and, and fans and even players. I mean, a hell, a hell of a lot of players were, you know, asking to get my autograph and whatnot, you know, being a legendary coach such as yeah. myself, several Super Bowl wins. But, hey, I, I think this Collider Kansas kid is going to be, uh, I think he's going to be a hell of an athlete. I like him, you know. He's a, he's a shorter guy. You know, he's, he's, he's a big guy. He's a defensive lineman. But he, he doesn't have the same sort of beef and the same sort of uh, uh, mass that some of these other defensive linemen got. But that's because he's an athlete, son. You know, he's coming from Pitt. He's an uh, old, old Pittsburgh boy like Aaron Donald. And I like that. You know, he's got, he's got some power. You know what I always used to say? I always used to say this. I would always tell my players this. I would always know how good... A football team was when they got off that bus, whatever players, whatever teams got the biggest butts, those are your best players right there. Why? You got power, okay? You got power, son. And that's what's so impressive to me about this guy. Explosiveness, power, coming right at that three technique position in a 4-3 defense. Woo-wee! Let me tell you, that's what I like to see. Coach, is that your best butt in the draft? He, he's got a hell of an ass. He does. But there's, hey, I'll be honest with you. When you get in the first round, that I would say that's probably one of my top uh, points of, uh, one of my top priorities when it comes to uh, evaluation of, of uh, offensive and defensive linemen. Uh, really, a anybody in the, in the front seven defensively, that's probably one of my top points of evaluation is uh, how, how big of an ass they got because that means they're explosive. You know, usually guys with big ass, they can jump. They can run. They can change directions. And that's what football is all about, baby. You know, uh, Coach, the Seahawks have 30 seconds left on the board. Do you think that they might shock everybody and take Will at this point? Uh, hell, you know what? They could. They could. I mean, hey, uh, you, got, you got this situation where you got Geno Smith. Where, you know, God bless him. God bless him. He went out for about nine years. You know, I, I don't know if he could have done a better job scooping dog shit than playing quarterback. But then this last year... <laughs> This last year, let me tell you what, he really he really showed something. He really showed that he's got some juice to him. And that's what I like to see. 
I, I like to see that, you know, when, when everything looked like it was going downhill, he found a way to pick up the pieces and, and make a name for himself. So, uh, and, and when I say pick up the pieces, I'm not talking picking up the pieces of that broken jaw when he was with the Jets. But I think Seahawks could use a quarterback, get, get Will Levis in there. And, uh, hell, like I said, he's, he's bitching and moaning. And he's upset. And he, oh, I thought, you know, people were saying I was going to be the first overall pick. Listen. Will, your time will come, son. Coach, I got one more question for you. And I'm busy, so I, good. I'm glad you, you keep it to one more yeah. question. From one Will to another, how do you feel about the Jets pick of Will McDonald at a position that they were already absolutely stacked at? Mm, a phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. I love that pick. Uh-huh. I love that pick, man. I do. Wow. I mean, I, that, is a, that is a New York football Jets pick. That's what mm -hmm. that is. I mean, that's, that's just – that was a phenomenal pick. I loved it, you know, being the, uh, uh, being the great uh, storied coach that I am. I mean, I've, I've coached many a Super Bowl team. And, uh, I, you know, again, I had a lot of good players on those teams. I did. But uh, of all those good players that I had – Nobody was better at their job than I was, the head coach. I mean, that's really how it all comes into play. So uh, I, I coached a lot of really good teams, uh, thanks to me, and uh, we won a lot of Super Bowls. And I think Will McDonald is a, is a fantastic pick for the Jets. Absolutely. Well, coach, I want to thank you for your time. We're going to go live back to our studio to see who the Seahawks are selecting at number 20. What do you think they do here real quick before they go? Uh, I mean... They could take that uh, Nolan Smith, I think his name is, out of uh, Georgia. The other. Jackson Smith. Ah! Bro, they have three good receivers. Wow. Jackson Smith in Jigba. They got DK, Tyler Lockett, and Jackson. Oh, my God. The Seattle Seahawks have the best player or best wide receiver in the draft in Jack Jackson Smith and Jigba. What a receiving core they have in Seattle now. Geno Smith is pumping his fists in the air somewhere right now. He is juiced. Uh, I know how I feel about it, but I'd love to see how our co-host, who for some reason hasn't been on camera for a little bit, feels about it. Uh, Esvan, how do you feel about this pick? Uh, uh, hey. Uh, yes, I'm in this pick. You were uh, uncharacteristically quiet there for a little bit. Oh why no! Why are you out of, of breath? No, I'm. I, uh, I'm I was holding my breath because yeah. because I did not know which direction the Seahawks were going to go in. I mean, this was. Uh, I mean, they were. They had me on the edge of my seat. I was so. I, I, there's so much emotion and 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 all that. That's why. Uh, you know, I was just holding my breath, seeing who they take. Jackson Smith and Jigba. This is a big. Uh, I mean, Will's in love with this guy. I think he's so good. Will, Will is he's, he's uncoverable. in love with this guy. He's uncoverable. This guy is a, a traditional slot receiver, unbelievable route runner, catches everything. Not super fast straight line, but he no. kind of doesn't need to be because a lot of the separation for these receivers comes from those breaks, right? Like you don't just line up and just you're not running sprints aside from each other. Yeah. It's the ability to run routes, sink your hips, boom, Turn, get open. They, I cannot believe weapons. he fell that far and he fell to the Seahawks. You know what's interesting is the second round is going to be very spicy because a lot of talent is going to be on there that we thought was probably going to go earlier at this point. Zay, some people had him in the first round. I, I didn't know if he'd scratch the first round. I'm surprised he went before uh, Jordan Addison out of USC, I think is his name. Uh, but, I mean, this guy is fast, great hands, phenomenal athlete, very small, though. The Bills just traded with uh, Jacksonville. Sorry. Yes. They go in front of the Cowboys, so maybe they think the Cowboys are taking somebody that they love. Well, tight end. And that's what I'm thinking, tight end. They do have Dawson Knox, I believe, but Dalton yeah. no, Kincaid, 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 still on the board. Kincaid is still on the board. Some people had him going at 13, and he is still here at 25. I have yes! Oh, we got something. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we got a pick coming in. I called this one oh. the number one tight end on most people's board. Dalton Kincaid just went yeah. to the Buffalo Bills. Athlete. My there goodness, go. that go. offense is going to be churning and burning. So, Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we are at the most exciting oh, part of the it? night where we watch two Dallas fans wait eagerly to see whether <laughs> their, their oh, expectations yeah. will soar or whether their hopes will be dashed on the rocks like mine were uh -oh. when the Jets picked it. Nolan Smith is still on the board, and so is Joey Porter Jr. Speaking of Dallas, you, you, Rob, you know, you know Blake's a, a former Giant. I know. And a Packer. And a Packer. Even worse. Yeah, <laughs>
Going Dallas, Dallas going kicker, guys. Oh uh, no, <laughs> uh, dude! If they go kicker, I'm the show. I'm I'm telling you right now. If the Dallas Cowboys draft a kicker, we're ending the show. Wait, oh, here we go. Here's Dallas's pick. Oh, oh Mazzy Smith out of Michigan. Mazzy Smith. Oh. D-line. Let's go. D-line. Oh, Let's go. go. This is the guy that I said might go your Dude. way. Dude. Yeah, this is the guy from Michigan. Came to me, not Mazzy Star, Mazzy Smith. This is, this is a big boy. I actually like him. He's got some good weapons, man. This is a real big boy. 6'3", 320 man. pounds. These are the kind of guys that keep... Guys like Blake safe and let guys like Blake go make tackles. Honestly, going from even from Pee Wee, from Pee Wee to middle school to high school to college to the NFL, the emphasis on the the front seven, the emphasis on the trenches becomes more and more valuable. When you're younger, hey, just have that kid that's really fast, just go outrun everybody. Yeah. But when you're in the NFL, when you're playing at the highest level and everybody is good. Yep. You got to focus on the things that are going to open up opportunities, the strategy, all that. And that's with the defensive line, the offensive line. I think Mozzie Smith is going to be a fantastic pick. Big, strong guy. Reminded me a little bit more of uh, a DJ Reader, but I thought he was a little bit more athletic than DJ Reader. Yeah. Uh, but he he has that, that frame and that body type of a big nose tackle. And uh, I think he can make some plays too. Uh, and, and I think he's going to be great in that D-line room with... Uh, with Tank Lawrence, with uh, with uh, Osa Odigizua, yeah, who's uh, of course who, Micah as well on the D line. Mm, that front seven is D line, bro. That's a good. That, I like that. Finally, a D tackle. Man. They got they got a. They have not taken seven. a D tackle in the first round in like 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to be a great pick for them. We got two picks left. It is hot in here. I am exhausted, but I'm still titillated by the prospect of who's going with these last two picks. Yeah. The Eagles have locked in their second of two picks in the first round. Who are we looking at here? I think they go best player available here. I, I, I think I think that's uh, that's a solid way to look at it. I think it's Joey always Porter solid. Jr. is where I bet they go. That's Porter. a great You know what? That's Joey a great pick. There. It's a great Joey pick. Porter Jr. would be a nice pick. I mean, he's got the pedigree. You know, his dad, Joey Porter, uh, one, one of the uh, great linebackers, one of the great linebackers for uh, several teams. They, I no mean, one Smith the D tackler like a D. He's a D end. He's a D end. D end. But or I mean, dude, honestly, he could even play outside linebacker probably. But I don't. I don't think. I think it's Nolan. I don't think they'll go Nolan Smith. I think it's either Nolan Smith, uh, Joey Porter, or Brian Branch. It was Nolan. Smith. Nolan. No shot. And there it is. Wow. wow. The Eagles. Man. Double up. Double up on the front seven. Wow. A pass rusher. I mean, why, I though? think I think Nolan Smith is a good player. But well, why would they get two? They already had such a good D line. Why? I don't they? really. I <laughs> feel like they should have gone secondary. They should have. They I feel like they should have. I mean, maybe maybe they graded Nolan Smith higher. Maybe they graded Nolan Smith higher, and they're going with their gut of best player available. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say Nolan Smith at thirty does seem like a that's, steal. That's, yeah. that's kind of a yeah. That's kind of nice getting getting Nolan Smith so late in the draft. Yeah. They, their yeah. line is their offense is pretty scary. The you know, hey, there's a reason they. I'm play not the gonna Super lie, Bowl. they killed the draft. Yeah, well, they had what I usually call a Baltimore draft, where like the best defensive player just somehow just slides like to Baltimore the lap. every year. Yep. The Eagles had two of the most dominant players on the board slide to them. I'm really happy with how the Eagles did. I'm really happy as a, as a football fan. I'm not happy with how the Eagles did as a Cowboys fan. But they they like actually like they kind of they kind of killed it today. I, they already had a solid team, and they just yeah. added two probably top ten prospects. Yeah. My three biggest draft winners: Houston Texans, Philadelphia Eagles, and surprisingly, the New England Patriots. Because the way yeah. that the New England Patriots masterfully traded out of their pick in front of the Jets, put the uh, Steelers in there in a position to take, obviously, who the Jets wanted, make the Jets panic pick, and then end up with the best cornerback in the draft. That's a master class in fucking your opponent. I, I, I love that. I completely agree. I think they did. I think I think those uh, three teams all did phenomenal today. Yeah, um, I think I think I think that's just absolutely fantastic. Before our journey ends, let's go ahead and pull up our mock drafts, and we can see Oof. me, Will Neff, and E Rob, <laughs> who had the most accurate mock draft. Can I we, can we look up our, our host leaderboard? I really think I got two. All right, let's see. Uh, oh my gosh! We all got twelve. We all got twelve point nine percent three-way tie. That's what the draft is all about, man. It's you never know what's gonna happen. Nope. It, it is it is so much fun. It's exciting to see. First 10 picks were insane. 
I had so much fun, you guys. Mm -hmm. I think we've done it all. I, I think, think we've, we've said it all. it all. And we'll see you next year, hopefully. Yeah. That was just fun. Thanks for the yeah. invite. I'm, dude, I'm telling you, thank you guys so much for coming on. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us for S-Fans Draft Night Extravaganza. Thank you so much. We will see you guys next year. Maybe. Let's do it. We'll see you guys. Bye, everybody.